welcome along and welcome back to Oak Hill. Today, we are going to be dealing with a large amount of silage up at our BGA. And so to deal with that, we're going to have to get ourselves a wheel loader and a very large bucket. I think we've got over 200,000 litres of silage to deal with. So that we're not there forever, uh, we're going to get a big piece of kit to deal with it. So what we need first is to get ourselves out of this negative money we have. So that means heading over to the bank and borrowing some money. I think we're going to need around about 10,000 to do this. But as we're 6,450 in the red, we need to borrow enough to get out of that, which takes us to 3,549. And to get out to 10,000, we are actually going to have to borrow another 10,000. So that takes us up to 13,549. Uh, which means we're now 645,000 in the red on our loan. But that's fine. We are still well within where I expect to be in the first year. And the reason why we borrowed so much money is this. This is the JCB 435S. They don't make a Massey Ferguson wheel loader as far as I can see. Well, not one that is available to us in Farming Simulator. So we're going to go with the JCB on a British map. We want to get the Michelin tyres uh, and I want to use that beacon light bar. I think that's cool. Uh, it's my only reason for that. Uh, rim colour, I want to get the fully yellow JCB rims. And that is going to cost us 9,381 to rent for today. Could cost us nearly four grand if we have to use it for an hour. So yeah, we need something that will load with this really quickly. And that's something that will let us load really quickly is this. This is the Rec Recici. I think that is high dump bucket. It's had 8,000 litre capacity. This is pretty much the biggest bucket I've seen in Farm Sim. <laughs> it will work really well on our wheel loader. Uh, we're going to get it in the Onyx. It's going to cost us only 295 to rent this. So massive amount on the wheel loader to rent a less than 300 pound bucket. So there we are, our two bits of kit for today's work. Uh, this is our JCB, absolutely massive, wonderful piece of kit. And our bucket beside it. So let's jump in the cab, start it up. Like that. We should be able to get the flashes on this fairly quickly. Yeah, there we are, look at that. That is really cool. And forwards, and hook it up. Now, do I need to come out here and hook up any... Looks like everything's hooked up, but we'll give it a try. Yeah, nothing to hook up on those. So let's take this and head down to our BGA to get this dealt with. Now, I think I was slightly wrong at the start of this. I think I said we had 200,000 litres to deal with. On my drive down here, I realised that it was at least double what we had last time. And what we had last time was 147,000. So, how much do we actually have in our silo here? 298,507. So, nigh on 300,000 litres of silage in our silage clamp. And we can take a massive 8,000 litres every single load. We should be able to get this done fairly quickly. After that, I want to have a look at what we've got on our farm because we have quite a large amount of leased stuff and our crops aren't going to be ready for at least another four days in game. So four days of leasing equipment that we don't need and in fact we won't need most of it until after harvest at best just makes no sense for us to be holding on to that. So. We're going to be returning a load of our equipment later as well. First though, let's get some of this loaded in. And hopefully this isn't going to take too long with this nice huge piece of kit. Even with such a large bucket, this is still taking quite a while to get done. We're already a couple of hours into this in-game. And we are slowly filling this up. It is actually large enough 
for us to completely fill this. It's creeping up on the actual amount. We had 9,000 this time. Uh, we're now up to 14,000. So it's going up about 2,000 liters in the time that we can come down here, grab a bucket, reverse up and come back out. Now having twice as much as we had last time, this should give us about 60, 60, 70,000 pounds, I think overnight. Um, as a result, that's, uh, that should be enough to get us through to harvest, especially if we get rid of all of the least stuff that we had. That should make a big difference. We are up to about 5,000 pound a day in loan costs is our biggest problem at the moment and that's why we we need sort of everything else to work to the end of this year we're going to be doing washed and sorted potatoes on here as well so the hope very much is that in washing and sorting the potatoes we're going to end up with a very good price for them it's nearly a thousand pound per thousand liters of potatoes once you wash and sort them so that's going to take us a little bit of time as well. Hopefully that will work fine. Uh, we're going to want a high dump bucket for that. Uh, although these two that we have here, we're going to return those bits if they are leased. And that way we'll be able to get a high dump bucket later on. It shouldn't cost us much. We should be able to afford that. Uh, the thing we can't afford is the harvester that's still going to cost us money to lease that the same goes for anything we use to harvest potatoes as well that will all need to be leased too still a fair amount of stuff that uh, needs to be done as we approach harvest but i think it's going to be late autumn before we hit the harvest the only thing that might change in that is if we have more silage to cut and we probably hold on to our mowers and our forage wagon uh, at the end of today just in case the grass grows enough for us to do some mowing mid-autumn even with a bucket this big we're still talking about 40 just under 40 odd trips back and forth interestingly enough i think we've got some grass in the walls here because i keep picking up silage grass like this Putting it into the second bunker so that we can ferment that later. So we could have had a little bit more than we actually had. And when we were loading these up, I very much thought we had some silage grass that was slipping out. And I'm not, I'm not surprised to find that in there. But as I was saying, we are taking it, it's going to take about 40 loads back and forwards even with a bucket this big to get this done. Now, this is why I went for this 8,000 litre bucket. The bucket we've got over there that we were using to do this, that is half the size of this one. It would have taken us... Well, no, in fact, it's not even half the size. I think, it's, I think it might even be a third of the size. I think it was only just over 2,000 litres, and it was not cut out for this size of job. Uh, and this has just made the whole thing more efficient. Yes, it's cost us 10,000 to do it, but in the long run, it's going to be worth it. 20,000 litres, well, 28,000 litres processing uh, once we tip this one in. So this is doing it at a rate that the BGA can't keep up with, even running this at 10 times. So uh, you can see how efficient this piece of kit really is. In general, silage, grass silage in particular, is an incredibly good crop to do when you're starting out. You can do it with a single mower and a single forage harvester on the front and back end of a tractor. So there's not a huge outlay for that. You need something to compact it and load it. So you could do it with buckets there. And you just need to buy the BGA. So depending on the map, that could be as little as 30,000 or it could be as much as a million. But given the right map and the right starting point, you could make an absolute fortune in seasons with silage. Three times a year, cutting everything and getting it compacted and getting it into your BGA. 
you are you could make an absolute killing and set yourself up really easily and then you could expand yourself on with something like this wheel loader to speed things up and just make things life a little bit easier for you and you're you're never in a position where you have to have this huge outlay of money for like a combine harvester or a potato harvester or anything like that it's a really really solid way to start start from scratch game our second to last bucket full out of here and our last full bucket i think we've only got about four just under four thousand liters left in that silage bunker and we are up to 37 36 000 in the actual processing digester as well so it's going it's going very close to 50,000. I think this holds I think this can process up to 200,000 if I remember correctly so it's not even a pro, you know we're not getting anywhere near maximum capacity in here but that is nearly 300,000 liters only 2,400 liters that's okay anything left in this bunker we do have grass silage left in this bunker. Where is it? There we go. It was down that le left hand side. Another 3,000 liters off. I knew we had more than that. Let's tip the last of this in and then we can return this wheel loader. And we're done for the day on that. And then we just need to look at what least equipment we need to get returned as well. So there we have it. Our JCB is all done and dusted. Let's get that returned then. So under our least items, we've got the JCB. Half an hour we were running that for. So return that. Yes. And then the other item I want to return. Look at all this least equipment. Wow. Uh, is that big shovel. So we'll return that as well. Now... Everything else in here, we need to have a look at and see what needs returning. I think this Trek 6, that can be returned. As can our Pottinger Plow. Uh, now this and this, we need to go and check we've got no seeds in. Uh, this we need to check we've got no fertilizer or anything in. Same with that, so we're going to go out to the farm for that. We need to check our Joskin. Uh, that that can be returned though in fact no that modulo that i know is empty so we'll return that as well i need to check on the state of our grass because if i can avoid having to re get those i will then we can get rid of the the stego that doesn't cost us much to rehire if we need to so return that and we will return this bucket. So that bucket held 2,700 litres. So yeah, it was about a third of what we were using there. So return that. And we'll turn the Asaria Scout as well. So that just means that we need to head back to our farm and check on what the status of these is. So to do that, I'm going to need to grab myself a tractor. Let's grab our smaller uh, 6614. Get it started up and just take it over into our shed so we can just basically cook these things up, check them out, and then see if uh, we can just straight up return it. So first one up is going to be our big spreader. What's the status of that? That has some fertilizer in it, so we'll empty that out. Oh, wow. That has not been helpful. So let's get that out of the way and that off and return that. So the breedle can be returned. Yes. Okay. And then I need to go and get my forklift and get these moved out of the way. My forklift being my little Massey Ferguson 135. Maneuverable enough that we should be able to get these over the far side. So down. Right down. There we go. And in four bags of fertilizer. We should be able to stack these on top of each other, to be honest. And we're just going to put them over this side over here. Last one. Get that up on the pile here. And then those are stacked nicely out of the way. 
And we can check our next bit of equipment to return, which I think is going to be our sprayer looking at the setup we have here. So that down and off. And they stack rather nicely. I think we're probably going to want the 135 a little bit more before we're finished. So we'll just park that out of here and turn it off. Next up is actually going to be the cedar. So that's nice and accessible. We can hook this all up and check what this has in it. There we go. And that is completely empty. So we'll disconnect that. There we go. Pull it forward. And we can then return that. So that returns in two parts. We've got the uh, Lion 3 303 and the Agrosem. So return that. I'm interested if this returns both parts. No, it has just returned the Cultivator, interestingly enough. So return both of those. Next, we need to check these. So we'll reverse up to the sprayer first. I think looking at the sprayer, that looks fairly full. So I'm expecting there to be a load of fertilizer in this. Hook that up. And that's exactly what we've got. So empty that out. Just the single pallet. And disconnect it. And then we're going to do the same with the front tank. See if the front tank's got anything in as well. That looks like it does from here. The needle is at least halfway around. So we'll just bring that here, connect that up, check that, and yes, that also has a load in it as well. So we'll empty that out too. Disconnect it, and then we can return this and return that. Yes. And that leaves us nicely lined up for that. So one last bit there, pull this forward. And that is basically everything in this shed has then been returned. Right, is there anything in this? Yes, there is. We've got some corn, so we'll pull this forward a little bit. Unload that, and then we can disconnect that into our garage and return the Tempo V8. Now, I don't think we've got anything else there. We've got our mowers. These cost a bit per day. And in fact, yeah, it's just our grass cutting equipment. So I'm going to leave those until the next game day so that I can check whether they need to be returned. We're going to go and put this, though, back in the other shed. All the mowing equipment is in this shed here with our tractors. Uh, it is all empty. It can all just be straight up returned if we need it to. But uh, none of it, I think, is, is massively expensive. One way to check how much these cost you per day is under your equipment screen here and you can click on this here for the least items and you can see how much it costs us if we can return the big jumbo that would be a good idea that's four thousand per day we should not be holding on to that that is actually a massive amount in those worst case scenario let's have a let's have a look at where our grass is so under here we need to turn on the grass and see how close we are to harvest. That is nowhere near harvest. We're somewhere in the middle there of the growing. That's not going to be ready until late autumn as well. As a result, there is no point in holding on to any of this grass stuff. So we'll get that returned as well. And so returning the mower conditioner front mower. There, the Novacat 302. Yes, return that. The top 60, 612, and finally the Pottinger Jumbo 72 Town. I never realized how expensive that piece of kit was. But that is no least items left on our farm. That is going to cut down our daily outgoings massively. And then this is the own stuff. We've got, we do own a few bits. I think we've got a spare weight up at the shop that I'm going to go and deal with. One of these weights here is one that we own and is sitting up at the shop. So I'm going to take a tractor up there and sort that in a bit. But having cleared out our farm of equipment, ready for harvest... 
we're gonna leave this here for today so all that remains is for me to say thank you for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video please give it a like drop us a comment and give it a share and for all the latest videos from virtual farmer please subscribe to the channel ring that bell and i will see you next time goodbye